Thank you very much, Presiding Officer, and for the opportunity for each party to make some remarks about D Day. Eighty years ago today, British soldiers joined those from America, Canada, and other nations to board planes, ships, and landing craft to begin the liberation of Europe. The men who were parachuted into Normandy or landed at Gold, Juno, Sword, Omaha, or Utah beaches on the 6th of June headed into danger and uncertainty. They were met with mines, barbed wires and the guns of the German defenders. 4,414 of the men involved in Opportune Neptune alone would lose their lives. But their sacrifice and the brave efforts of all those individuals on that historic day played a key part in the downfall of Nazism and ensuring the freedom and democracy for Western Europe. On this day, the 80th anniversary, and as the veterans of that day become fewer and fewer, and the event passes from memory to history, our need to remember their heroism becomes ever more important. So today and always, we will remember them. Thank you. Could I ask the Deputy First Minister, does she agree that granting new oil and gas licences for the North Sea is essential not only for our energy security, but to protect tens of thousands of jobs here in Scotland? Deputy First Minister. Well, can I start, presiding officer, by echoing Douglas Ross's comments. Today is a day for reflection on the sacrifice and the bravery of all those who served during the Second World War especially those who made the ultimate sacrifice and laid down their lives for us in pursuit of a better world. And the youthful faces that we have seen in the photographs this morning with the TV coverage stay with us and have certainly reminded me of my loved ones. Were it not for the courageous actions of those brave men and women, we would not enjoy the freedoms which we now take for granted including the freedom to debate and disagree this very afternoon. We owe them a huge debt of gratitude. And as we mark the 80th anniversary of D-Day today, we will never forget those who have and continue to lay down their lives in the service of their country, and we will never take our freedoms for granted. Well, presiding officer, we are absolutely crystal clear in our support for a just transition for Scotland's oil and gas sector, which recognises the declining nature of the North Sea Basin and is in line with our climate change commitments. Because the difference between this party and the Conservatives is that we will never abandon our workers, yeah. we will never leave a legacy of inequality, yeah. Yeah. and we will never destroy communities like the Tories did in the last transition. Yeah. Yeah. Any. Any further extraction must be consistent with our climate obligations and we must approach licensing on a rigorously evidence-led, case-by-case basis with robust climate compatibility and energy security being key considerations. Douglas Ross may not care, care very much for doing the hard work to understand yeah. the evidence of decisions, yeah. as he confessed earlier this week with Liz Truss's budget, but we yeah. are evidence-led and we will ensure our decisions on North Sea oil and gas are consistent with the evidence. Yeah. Douglas Ross. Well, the evidence, the evidence is very clear. The SNP plans to be against any new oil and gas licences will see tens of thousands of jobs lost in the North Sea and the North East. That's the evidence. That is very clear. Now, the Deputy First Minister also said this this week. She said about the SNP, and I quote, have never said no to new oil and gas licences. But, of course, they opposed the Rosebank field. They opposed Campbell. And let's just hear what one of her government colleagues has said. Mary McCallum, the Cabinet Secretary for Energy, said clearly the Scottish Government, and I quote the Energy Secretary's words, do not agree with the UK Government issuing new oil and gas licences. How can the SNP even pretend to support the oil and gas sector and the jobs that are crucial to it when their own Energy Secretary says that? Deputy First Minister. 
very difficult to believe the Tories on oil and gas when we know that Douglas Ross's party has been exploiting Scotland's yeah. oil and gas yeah. to fill their budget holes for decades. Yeah. And what's got Scotland got to show for it? Austerity, Brexit. Yeah and the cost of living crisis. We've never proposed a policy of no further North Sea licensing at all. We have said no. quite clearly that it has to be compatible with our climate change obligations. And any licensing process has to be subject to a robust climate compatibility checkpoint. But Douglas Ross wants to talk about evidence. The scientific evidence is clear. There is an urgent need to transition away from fossil fuels globally if the Paris Agreement climate goals are to be met. And our focus is on meeting our energy needs, reducing emissions and ultimately delivering affordable energy. Yeah, well. Douglas Ross. The Deputy First Minister didn't want to listen to the Conservatives on this. I was simply quoting her Cabinet colleague. The Scottish Government, the SNP Cabinet Secretary for Energy, says we do not agree with the UK Government issuing new oil and gas licences. That's not me saying that. That is the SNP's Energy Secretary. And if the Deputy First Minister is trying to distance herself from those comments, there's more. Here's Hamza Youssef, the SNP leader until just last month. He said, and I quote, I don't think it was the right thing to do to grant 100 new licences. The SNP leader before that, Nicola Sturgeon, says, I don't think we can continue to give the go-ahead to new oil fields. And several times just this week, I asked John Swinney directly if the SNP backed new oil and gas licences. He wouldn't give a straight answer. So here's an opportunity for the Deputy First Minister. Does the SNP Scottish Government agree that new oil and gas licences for the North Sea should be granted, yes or no? Deputy First Minister. Country, I have been very clear in yeah. our approach, and our approach is that Consistent. we will continue to support yeah. the workers, we will continue to support the industry in line with our climate change obligations, and the industry itself it, believes in that transition. It, but the facts speak for themselves in terms of what we are doing. Last month alone, we saw progress of two significant projects that will drive forward our energy transition and underline our position as an energy powerhouse. The groundbreaking on Sumitomo's £350 million high-voltage direct current cable factory and the investment that was made eh, through Haventus in the redevelopment of Ardisi Airport. That's because this government believes in a just transition, a transition that does not leave the workers behind, that does not turn the taps off overnight, but is very conscious of our climate change eh, obligations. And we've heard a lot of figures this week that have been cooked up by the Tories, yeah. and the bottom line for us is that we are led by the evidence and we will always back the North East and Scottish workers. Yeah. Dr. Shaw. People might not have realised listening to that answer, I'd simply ask the Deputy First Minister, yes or no, do the SNP agree with the granting of new oil and gas licences? And we got nothing, no answer whatsoever about that specific question. So let me be clear. The Scottish Conservatives support new oil and gas licences because new developments will protect jobs in the north east of Scotland, but they will also support the just transition to net zero. They will keep bills down, they will prevent us having to import costly oil from foreign countries, and they will secure Scotland's energy future. Now, they are trying to pretend otherwise, Presiding Officer. But the SNP are against new oil and gas licences, regardless of the impact on workers affected. And if we're speaking about evidence, I go back again to the Aberdeen and Grampian Chamber of Commerce. They said in a report that the position to not grant new oil and gas licences would put 100,000 jobs at risk. So, Deputy First Minister, why are the SNP ignoring them? Deputy First Minister. I think Douglas Ross might find that the same report had some criticisms uh, for the Conservatives yes. as well. But yeah. uh, Douglas Ross talks about supporting uh, the North East, and I've been very clear about our position of uh, new licences. But of course, if Douglas Ross wants to back the North East, there's some great big questions for him uh, this very day, on a day that he betrays a Conservative candidate yeah. in the North East. Yeah. Who, their, who the Conservatives trusted to be a minister in the UK government, who is currently recovering from ill health, who was planning to stand members. for the election, and who was supported by local members. Now, I am old enough to remember when Douglas Ross said he wasn't going to stand again for Westminster because he wanted to focus on Holyrood in 2026. 
Our position is clear. We will back the North East, we will back workers, and we intend on achieving our climate change aims. Yeah.